Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really lovely side stepper card. I've made a centre stepper, I've made a double centre step, <laughs> um, I've made a few stepper cards. I've got a playlist, so I'll, I'll link them up there. So I've just taken the measurements from one of them and I've just taken one side off basically to make the side stepper. So they're really, really fun to make and this one's very, very easy. It really is. So you can see there you've got your, that's the side profile there. And then I've used the supplies or some of the supplies from my Paper Society kit. It's really nice actually, I'm enjoying using this one. So this is a, just a with love card. So you can you know, have this for any many occasions really. And then inside you've got room to write your message. I just need to add a mat there on top, but I'll talk you through all that in the video. I also like that we've got this little floating bit here. I just love how they all just kind of cascade up there. I just think it looks really, really nice. All that gold coming through, lots of heat embossing, and I'm gonna show you exactly what I've done. So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I've got my folder here. So for this card, I've used the dies, the stamps, and the papers. Okay, so I'm not sure what sentiment I'm gonna do yet, but um, I'm keeping everything in here, apart from obviously the inks and the paper flowers, because the more that you you know, the more that you get of these, they all stack up against each other. So this one is the Papercraft Society Card Making Magic Box 1. So you can imagine all these envelopes lined up. It's just nice to keep the dies and the stamps all together. And any loose papers you might have, you know that they all go. So I've already gone ahead and I've stamped, actually let me show you, I've stamped the flowers because I've done quite a few of them. So it's these three here and then I've used the three dies to die cut them, so those ones there. I may well add in these little sprigs here as well, they're really, really nice actually, and I've also done the leaves. Okay, so I'll show you all of that now in a bit more detail. So I stamp them in a group like this, of groups of three, and then die cut them in groups of three, it's just easier. And I've used just some gold embossing powder from my own stash. I just thought the gold with the yellow, gold really works lovely with this collection actually, so um, yeah, I thought I'd bring that out. So what I've done to get the colour is you get this yellow ink pad here, and I just, they're really juicy, they certainly have loaded them with pigment, but if you just pop it on a clear, I'm just using this clear block here, and then with a paintbrush, I've left this one here that I haven't done. And you can just go in and just paint it, colour it in. And it's really easy to do. It goes on darker. This isn't the right paintbrush. I grabbed a different one because this one's gone all spiky. But um, anyway, it gives you an idea. We just get that to a nicer point. Yeah, so it goes on much darker, but then you can layer over again if you want to create a little bit of shade. Um, you can obviously let this dry and then go in a bit deeper in colour, you know towards the center there if you want to but um, I just went over it the first time and if you do go over any of the embossing powder which you're bound to you can just rub over this with your finger and it will just buff it all up again so you see it is quite orangey when it goes on but once it dries it does dry to more of a yellow color okay then these are all of the leaves that I've die cut so I've done you know a few of each size and then again just using a blending brush which is somewhere, I seem to have lost that, and the green. Again, I just put it on my mat and I just blended them just on the tips there, just to give them a little bit more of something. You can just see the darker green there. And these ones are really nice, you've got all that detail on them when you die cut them. So once you see how I put the card together, it's up to you in terms of you know quantities. I've done quite a lot. I won't use all these, I doubt, on this card. So I've got them for you know future. So also with these bigger ones, you get the lovely little stamen detail. So I've just popped that in the centres of the largest ones as well. Okay, we'll do all that in a second. I've also die cut this one, which is another die in the pack. Beautiful, and that's just gonna be a nice kind of decorative trim that will go along here. So that's all of those bits and pieces ready. I'm gonna just remove that out of my way because I don't wanna get that anywhere. Okay, so I have already gone ahead and done it because I just wanted to make sure it was all gonna work and I don't wanna waste this card. So this is a piece of seven by 11. The final fold of the card will measure seven by five and a half. Okay, so on the envelope punch board, there is that envelope size. You'll just need to make one. But I wanted to use the pretty much the whole length. Well, this is 11, so because I thought then at least everybody can do it without using 12 by 12 card. Okay, so easiest way to do this, first of all, is you don't want to score through the centre, but I've just got my ruler here. The T-square ruler is really handy because I can slide it, if I remove that, I can slide it along the top here. 
So I'm going to pop my cardstock in and you want to basically do a pencil mark at three and a half, which is half of seven inches. So I just pop my ruler in here and then I can line it up. So with a pencil, I'm going to do all this again, even though I've already done it. You just want to do a pencil mark all the way down. Do it lightly so you can easily rub this out. Okay. Then on the left hand side, turn it so that's facing the top and you want to score at five and a half down to the pencil mark so just down to the center okay then flip it all the way around and you want to score at one and a half to the pencil line and two and a half to the pencil line five inches to the pencil line eight inches to the pencil line and then nine and a half to the pencil line and then what you want to do is cut from that first score line on this one where you've just done all those score lines. You're going to cut from the first score line down to the last score line. Okay, so on this left hand side you should just have one score line in the centre. On this one here you'll have all of these score lines and that's where you're cutting your line from the start to the end. Okay, so you should have one and a half here that's still attached and one and a half here. You can now rub out your pencil mark, okay? So what you want to do is bring this one up towards you and just start to fold it into that fold, into a mountain, okay? Then these outer ones here and here will become mountain folds as well. The next ones will become valleys and this centre one will become another mountain. So you'll have one, two, three, four mountain folds two valley folds and that is it and once you start to bring that all together keep those valley folds down it will all fold flat now the key to make this stand is you have to burnish all of those score lines really well so you want to go in underneath and burnish them all and then also on the top here on the back and this top one and then it will stand up with no problem at all okay so that is the card now ready to decorate. So I have this one here where I've already done my mat and my layer, and this is using that lovely pearlized, if I turn it this way you can see, it's got a nice pearlized finish to it in that kind of yellow. And then this is one of the pattern papers. So the mat, so the yellow piece is three and a quarter by five and a quarter, and the pattern piece on top is three by five. That one I'm gonna stick here and then with this patterned piece, I'm probably gonna have it there and some flowers here and then my sentiment there, that's my plan. What I'm gonna do is you can also do a mat and a layer here if you want. So if you did wanna do one in this section, then you would want it to be, I'd say three and three eighths of an inch by one and a quarter. And this one inside here, if you wanted to do this one, again, it would be that same three and three eighths of an inch and it would be by two and three quarters. Okay, so that's if you do want to mat and layer these sections here. I'm going to cover mine with flowers so you're not going to see any of it. So I figured it's not worth me really wasting cardstock on something you're not really going to see. So I'm just going to stick this one down on the front. Okay, and then because I've got quite a lot of flowers to stick down, I've got my glue gun on. So what I want to do first of all is I want to work with the larger flowers, get them in place and I can start kind of nestling in the smaller ones and those tiny ones and all the leaves around it. So I'm just going to randomly start popping these down. I don't want it to overhang too much on this side here because I don't want to go any bigger with my envelopes. So I'm just going to keep that like that. I might put a little, actually what I'll do is I'll come in a bit further and I can put a leaf in there instead. So let's do this one here. Yeah. Now if you want to add some acetate and have them kind of maybe popping up a little bit more then you can. I may well still do that but for the minute I'm just going to start placing these down. Okay, so that's the flowers down. Now I want to start adding in all of those leaves now.
Okay, so there it is so far. I really like it. I love it. I love it nice and full. And I've also stuck that decorative trim. I did go in and die cut some more leaves just because I thought I needed some more. Now, I do quite like the thought of having it kind of floating. So I've just cut some strips of acetate. This is strong acetate. This is from some packaging. So it is because um, I want it. To, I don't want it to. Sometimes it's nice to have them kind of wobble a little bit. But these ones, I do want them to stay upright. So what I'm going to do is just always whenever you're using acetate, if you're sticking something on it, the red tape's really good. So I'm just going to pop some red tape on the back of the flower. And my acetate strips are about half an inch. I usually do that about half an inch. Just stick that on the back. Okay. And then you can decide how far down you want it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mat the back here just so it conceals all of the acetate. So I'm going to trim that down a little bit because I don't need it that long. So again, it's up to you. But look, you want to make sure it stays within the height of the card, in, within this square here, so it all fits in your envelope. I think that's going to look quite nice, like so. So I'm just going to pop a strip of tape along the bottom, because once I add that mat onto the back of it all, that will secure it all down again. So this is just really to hold it in place. So just make sure you stay within that square. There you go. Got one there already. Then you could attach more onto that. I am going to pop... Um, a leaf onto this so I'm just gonna pop a little bit again I could use actually I could have just used glue there but I mean you're not going to see this either way but I just popped a little bit of tape and I'm just going to feed that underneath the flower there I'll probably do another leaf coming down here and then I'm going to do a medium one probably there so what I again I can do is just pop a little bit of tape onto the the side just one of the petals really of this one because I don't think I need to add another piece of acetate and then I'm just going to pop it just there so it's actually stuck on that same piece of acetate okay I don't think I'm going to add any more I think that's actually enough and then, okay then I'm going to still need to look at what sentiment I'm going to have on this so then you open the card up and you will have your message in here so I've got this mat which will sit perfectly there and then I'm going to get a white mat over the top. This piece measures three by five so I'm just going to stick that down. Okay the back one here you'll want a piece of paper that's three and a quarter by two and a quarter so I've gone for the same um, pattern paper so you know obviously stick all your acetate down and then this one here. I'm going to put with love from one of the pre die cuts here because the others there's a lot of Christmas ones Christmas sentiments so I'm going to use the with love and then I'm going to finally die cut some of the little sprigs those little ones um, that I showed you earlier and I'm going to do that in gold and just kind of nestle a few of them around just some of these these little white areas but look at this isn't it gorgeous look at all that sparkle really is lovely it's got quite a wow factor actually with all those flowers so I'm just going to tidy this up and die cut a few sprigs okay there you have it so I've just got one there 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 and just one up in that little cluster you've got all that beautiful image there on the papers that you can see I think it looks great and then I just need to add a white mat there to write my message if you do want the measurements for that you're going to need a piece that is four and five eighths of an inch by two and five eighths of an inch and that will be in my blog I'll write those measurements down but um yeah there you have it all folds flat like I said it will fit in a seven by five and a half envelope so you just have to make that on your envelope punch board but you know I'm really really pleased with this it stands up really nicely just make sure you, you fold all those lines all of your score lines really well and once that sits in an envelope it will stay in that shape anyway but I, lo I love it I think it's really really nice so I'm definitely going to be making some more of these and I love that that you know just kind of floating up the top there so there you have it so i hope you've enjoyed the card that i've made using supplies from my kit hope it's inspired you and yeah thanks for watching please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more see you soon bye